welcomed. Welcome to Together Unlocked. It's a very hot day and I, as you can probably tell, have got a brand new microphone. Um, same old cable, which is blue, same old pink top, if you can't see us very clearly. I'm Jude Gosling, Artistic Director of Together 2012. We're bringing you this show today as part of our Join In From Home programme of Accessible Inclusive Arts Activities Today, we've got a focus on poetry with our other usual spots of the Paralympics, Virtual Nature Watch. We have a very special item today where we're going to spend two minutes in virtually cool woodlands. Oh, we'll also be looking at what's new in gaming and what else is on sport in terms of TV, all of that drama and theatre and spectacle. So before we go any further, we're going to go to the other end of our virtual sofa first in the West Midlands for some introductions and audio description. And then I'll come back to East London and we'll finish introducing and describing ourselves. Well, hi, good afternoon. I'm Robin Sergener. I'm Business Director at Together 2012 and one of the multiple co-hosts of Together Unlocked. Yeah, we're up here in the Sutton Coalfield where it is also extremely hot uh i'll just get a bit of description for myself i have uh, shiny white gray hair um for regular viewers um i'm not wearing no rimmed glasses i'm not wearing any glasses at all because i broke them uh so i'm now blinking a lot at the screen in contact lenses i haven't worn in nine months so uh it's me that is seeing you out of focus, hopefully, and not the internet. <laughs> um, and uh, um, and I'm to, to, to cap that off, I am wearing a black round neck t-shirt, uh, which says Pink Floyd across the top um, and has the very famous prism emblem, which is like a, um, a white triangle with light, white light going in one side and a rainbow light coming out the other side, the dark side of the moon. Uh, I am Josh Sergener. Uh, I'm also one of the hosts of Together TV, uh, and I am a PhD research student at Sheffield Hallam University. And um, which coincidentally, I'm wearing the T-shirt that is maroon and has Sheffield Hallam University in nice white writing, so I don't forget where I'm supposed to study. I haven't been there in a while, so it's just to make sure I don't get lost when I can re finally return to doing some work. Uh, I have swept back blonde hair. Um, that's now kind of shoulder length. Uh, it's getting longer and longer as the weeks go on. Uh, and yeah, that is that's about it. I'm hiding my sunburn as well. Well, thank you for that, West Midlands. So, me, Jude Gosling, I have an ever getting shorter corona crop as I experiment with the clippers and it gets hotter and hotter in East London. I've got black plastic glasses, black wrist braces, silver jewellery and an orange t-shirt that says I believe hot tuna which is pretty much how I'm feeling. So with me in the studio is the artist and the chair of Together 2012, Julie Newman. What do you look like, Julie? Very hot. <laughs> I, I've, got, I've got a bit of a red face. Uh, you might notice perspiration uh, uh, glistening on my brow. I've got uh, silver and gold hair, dark rimmed glasses. Uh, I'm wearing a predominantly black t-shirt with turquoise and lighter blue uh, geometric -y, spacey symbols sort of designs with straight lines and round lines um, and I'm wearing a, a very pleasant and tasteful piece of jewellery uh, which shows the three moons in aspect. What she means is it's an early birthday present from me. But yes, I think it's extremely tasteful as it well. Behind us, you can just see part of the Together 2012 graffiti style banner. Well, I say graffiti style. In fact, we graffitied it ourselves during one of our Summer Together programs with help from a company called Graffiti Life. If you're out there, thank you very much. We still love our banner. It shows all of the activities that we do 
And that includes dance, drama, filmmaking, photography, visual art, and a whole host more things, including carnival art, street art, and other things that I am simply too hot to remember. We've also behind us got our teddy bear, Tony. Tony is this week's competitor in the Clockwork Paralympics, and we'll be doing more of that later for the virtual bear hunt. But first, it's Wednesday. We have our pop-up poetry club, newly meeting by telephone. Julie, do you want to give us a report? Uh, I would, but I'm a bit dis disconcerted by the by the looks that are happening. Is something wrong? Just to check out. Uh, we weren't getting any captioning, and it's now just started coming through. Okie doke. Well. <laughs> Let's not worry too much about that, but thank you very much, yeah. Julia, who is also sweltering away doing the captioning. If you miss anything on the show, the recording will be up tonight with the captions and that will remain permanently online. If you look on our website, www.together2012.org.uk, then under Together Unlocked TV, you will find links not only to all of the previous programmes, but also the highlights for each day's programmes and the links to anything we mention. So today, the poetry that we're about to read, for example, will all be up on that menu that's underneath the main Together Unlocked TV menu with highlights and links. You can also see information about the animals that make random appearances as they kind of stomp anarchically through the studio or, in the case of some of the dogs, actually present their own slots. And there are the words to two of the anthems that we've developed on the show, We Will Survive and A Nice Cup of Tea. So there's lots and lots to explore. But now we've got the captions working again. Julie, how did poetry go? It was as lovely as ever. Um, we sadly missed out a couple of our poets. I think BT landlines must have gone down sort of across the two boroughs, actually, from Tower Hamlets and uh, Newham because uh, both of our regular participants who use the BT landlines to, to talk to us, couldn't, we couldn't get through to them at all. So there's something up or down with, uh, <laughs> with BT. Um, so we missed them massively. Uh, and uh, somebody else had, a, a, had a, an appointment. And so we were slightly lower in numbers but it was a nice nice session and there was a lot of humor and uh, it was very chatty and um, as always very productive and for anybody who's new to the show or new to together 2012 the poet pop-up poetry club is part of our club's program we run as part of our artistic program a year-round outreach program for disabled people and anybody they want to bring with them for support or to just come and enjoy it with them and of course if you can get to east london but if you can get to east london in more normal times it's entirely free so we have a craft-based art session on a tuesday morning we have the pop-up poetry club on a wednesday morning we have the youth together session specifically for under 25s doing combined arts on a thursday and on a Friday, we have drawing and painting back with the art club. And then on a Monday, depending on the week of the month, we have a film-based dance club. And we also have, as Julie runs, the Photographers and Filmmakers Club. And we would finally have a week, a monthly live music night on the first Friday of each month. At the moment, we are now successfully running the poetry club as a phone-based group and julie will just tell us a little bit more about that in a minute we've replaced the music club temporarily at least with a zoom together on the first thursday of each month which also includes poetry and everything else has become a part of our online web-based program which is led by this live stream we hope to introduce you to the join in from home program give you plenty more ideas and generally have a good time as well. So how does it work now it's a phone-based group, Julie? And we pay for all the calls, don't we? We do. We pay for all the calls and our engagement support person, Noel, uh, is 
in charge of the virtual switchboard, he basically calls up all of us individually. Um, and then we wait until we're all there, ready to go. Um, and we start off usually at about 10.30 or just before sometimes. Um, so we have a, the first half hour is we, uh, we read poems either that we've written ourselves or that we've found. And, um, you know, so for example, uh, I read a, a song actually, I read the lyrics of a song um, this morning uh, but I only read the half, first half, and then Duncan read the second half, which was lovely. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was called Accentuate the Positive. And because we were talking about positive and negative, uh, it seemed to fit in. And Duncan and I had the same thought, which is kind of spooky. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and we have we all respond to to the poems that we've selected and read out, uh, and then. At 11 o'clock, we go off and write our own poetry uh, and come back uh, in time for 11.30 when we read our poems out. As each one is read out uh, individually, then afterwards, Alison Marchant, who leads the poetry group, uh, encourages each one of us to comment on the poems that we've just heard. Um, and I have never heard a negative comment ever um it's always very very positive and very supportive and i think in any case the point of our clubs is neither to be negative nor indeed cliquey i mean i don't think you've ever met duncan for example no, in no. real life usually like i say it's a, a clubs a clubs program for anybody who can get to east london but of course you don't have to be able to get to east london any longer we do have some spare places, so if you're interested in joining in, and particularly if you're somebody who can't access or you know somebody who can't access Zoom-based groups because they don't have the data access or the device access, this is very much a club for people who don't have smartphones, don't have Wi-Fi, but still want to write poetry and do it in a supportive, safe atmosphere with other people. So we're going to read some of the poems that were written just this morning. And I think we should start with yours, Julie. Do you want to explain the theme a bit as well? Alison chose the theme for this week as positive and negative, and we loosely interrupted it. Sorry, interpreted it. <laughs> I interrupted myself. <laughs> <laughs> but we loosely interpreted it as being sort of good, bad, uh, opposites, really. So there was a, a range of uh, contribution from people according to our individual interpretations. So, yeah, that, that was the theme. Uh, next next week's theme is, is going to be an, another interesting one, which is going to be also open to interpretation, and that is movement. And again, if you aren't able or want to join in the group per se, you're always willing to join in with writing about the theme. Send it to us and we will also read it out. Or, of course, send us a recording of you reading it, audio or video. We would love to play it. So that theme again for next week is movement, is movement, which you can interpret any way you want. And in the meantime, let's hear the first poem, which is from Julie. Seems a bit funny to lead off. It's a bit embarrassing, really, but so bear with me. Magnetism. Positive energy flies in the air to meet the negative force that defies gravity. Floating above the surface without wings to flap or engine to create energy, the source will remain endlessly suspended without sound or strings. No weight freed from the ties that bind us to earth and pull us down to an existence in constant battle with the speed of the planet. We remain on course around our sun, never faltering, our journey now begun, the traje trajectory set, all choices gone. We carry on tide as one to inevitability. Opposites attract, and in that the spell is broken. Positive to positive cannot be sustained. Negative to negative repels the same. And so the gravity of the situation is lightened. What is drawn to each other becomes the magic creating the force that fills the space in the middle. 
Still a freedom lies within, the north at one end, the south lying opposite, all in between drawn with magnetism to sit slightly over and above the mediocrity of endless existence. Plodding on resigned to an earthbound future, but flying quietly triumphant on the hidden waves. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank wow. you, Judy. Thank you. And I think we've talked about this before, but one of the advantages, if you like, of simply being forced to sit down and write a poem however you feel is that actually that can be really liberating and much more so than working yourself up and thinking, oh, I've got to feel really creative and really original. And, and then you almost you're so almost frightened to start because you've set up such high expectations. Whereas the thing about the club is it's just get something down. And as we've said before, very often people finish it later or develop it into a longer poem. Robin, I think you've, if you're able to see without your glasses, I think you've got one of Duncan Bridge stocks. I, I do. Um, and uh, this one is entitled Accentuate the Positive. Put more hep in your step. Don't put gloom in your balloon. Eliminate the negative. Don't be thorny. That would be corny. Don't festoon with doom. Brightness will loom. Walk on the sunny side of the street. Let you not be downbeat. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. Don't walk in the shade with your blues on parade. Don't be glum when you could be a chum. Don't be sad, better to be glad. It's not so easy to be kind to yourself. Easier said than done, I think you will find. If you can find some peace, let's hope your blues will cease. Brilliant, and thank you again for that, Duncan. Um, I'm going to read, except I think it has just been blown off by the fan. <laughs> Found it at last. Alison March, and Alison, as Julie said, is our club's programme leader. She's also an international artist in her own right. We're an artist-led organisation, so we all work part-time, so we're also able to practise our art. Although I think that's slightly gone out the window since Corona started. So this is Alison Marchant, where I am. The weather is warm, then too hot, a heat wave. The music next door is soothing, but becomes so loud I can't sleep. The sea is cool and refreshing, then freezing. The fog is a pleasant haze, then as thick as pea soup. The chocolate is delicious, but has given me a migraine. The night is lit by stars, but is pitch black so I can't see or feel where I am. And I thought that was a, a great thing around positives and also reminds me of many summer trips where, yes, one minute you can't wait to get in the water and the next minute you can't wait to get out again. <laughs> I think you've got Glory Sango's poem, Josh. Uh, yes, so this is called Football. Hold your football, hold your football still, otherwise it will bounce on the floor. Otherwise, the wind will blow away the ball. Hold it before you play it, but be careful. You might slip over with it. You might put it in the net. You might score. Hold the ball still or bounce the ball. Brilliant. And um, although people won't realise it, regular viewers have seen Glory quite often because he is a member of our associate drama company, Act Up Newham. And Act Up Newham have been producing something over Zoom for this show and for their own YouTube channel every single week. And even though they're officially on holiday, I've just had another video through for Friday, which is there looking back at Zoom calls and is actually a film all about Zoom. So looking forward to that. Um, finally, for today, in terms of the Pop-Up Poetry Club, this is Taylor Henville. Taylor is an artist and filmmaker and also a volunteer at Together. And this is called Grey Cloud. A single grey cloud hanging in the sky against the crystal blue, suspended, still threatening to unleash a downpour. Is it friend or foe? Will it ruin a sunny day or free us from summer heat's unbearable grip? A single grey cloud. 
It could cause a commotion or just float away. It's rather rebellious in its own way. Thank you for that, Taylor. I thought that was great. Um, summer poems. Have anybody got any tips? If you're writing about the heat. Oh. I, I, I would say um, in, in, in the best way of sitting still in the sun would be to sit still and take a moment and think about what it makes you think about, if that makes sense. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit like going around in circles, but you know, you go, well, do I write about the sunshine? Do I write about the flowers? For me, it would be, well, actually get there, chill out for a few minutes and then see where it takes me. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to get used to this new microphone with this posh switch. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. we were hoping to have our writer-in-residence, Penny Pepper, on the show today. Penny has also melted, so we're hoping to see her on Friday because a little bird told me she is also reaching the age of 60 this weekend and we'd love to help her celebrate. She was due to read a poem at the end and if I can find one of mine in time, I will do it. it you know, just reminded me, but, um, but it's actually one I wrote last summer and I've been thinking a lot about summer holidays because, of course, most of us in the Shielding group are not going away and many of us couldn't afford to do that in the first place. But last summer, we took a week off in August for the first time in years because Julie was recovering from surgery. We needed a week's respite break. We went down to Bournemouth, and of course, we've seen how dreadful the beaches have been this year. Got all the way down. Somebody was driving us down because Julie hadn't driven for eight weeks since the surgery. And the hotel just said, oh, there's no point in you unpacking. You won't be able to come in. And that turned out to be absolutely true as power wheelchair users, but it didn't alter the fact that they advertised themselves as being accessible. And Julie had literally spent hours on the phone talking to the management to check it all. So we ended up where I hadn't wanted to be, which was miles out of town under a motorway, which is anybody who travels for work knows, and particularly if you're an artist, there's a certain kind of familiarity to these motorway places. And it's by the, if you have assistance dogs, as we do, walking the assistance dogs around the car parks becomes monotonous, but also dangerous and challenging. And I wrote a poem about that, even though, in fact, we had a great time. And I have to say a shout out to the village hotel chain. Mm. I have never stayed in a friendlier pleasant more pleasant yeah it was just absolutely lovely and although it was packed with families this is the place who took us in and literally created a room for us last thing on a Saturday night and and facilitated me going into the pool which was wonderful I was so so touched by that because it was exactly the exercise that I needed and you know I, I have great admiration for you guys who are swimmers because you know, you, you make the time, you, you create the time and you do it regularly. But for me, it was such a treat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think the other thing that really struck us, because we would never choose to stay somewhere where there were lots of families in the height of the summer, is the families were just lovely as well. And I mm. think if you've got a hotel with the right atmosphere, then everybody has that sort of you know it really is infectious so we were sad not to be able to repeat the experience but on the other hand the thought of going to those beaches packed like that even without coronavirus I think would be uh, in this heat no June oh no, no. I mean it, it just wouldn't be fun so and I the idea of being under canvas in this heat we have we've camped a lot in the past just not since running together but yeah, I've been under canvas where there isn't a breath of wind or any shade and it goes on like this for days. And um, So if you're sitting at home listening to us at Burbalon, count your blessings. It could all be much worse, apart from anything else. We could be based in Manchester. I'm working with some artists who are under lockdown at the moment, ready for our festival. And again, shout out to you. We really appreciate what you're going through indeed julie and i haven't left this spot well 
not these actual wheelchairs, but we haven't left the house since March. So March the we, March the tenth, so we know how you're feeling. <laughs> Two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> what we can offer you, apart from some cheerful, not very coherent company in this heat, is the access to a free inclusive join in from home program. So what I'm gonna do is put on a video that explains a bit more about what we offer with poetry and also I believe in this film, Family Activities. Together 2012 is running a join in from home program from our website, together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, join in from home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. All of our activities can be enjoyed by families at home, but we also have some of our favourite activities here from our family activity days, which we usually hold in the school holidays. Card making with pens, stickers and paper is also popular. You can show someone you're thinking of them by making them a special card, and if it can't be delivered safely, then send, it with a send a photograph with a personal message or keep it till later. Here we have instructions for making a sock puppet, a storage jar or night light or a lunchbox or storage box, all of which are really popular with our family activity days. And you can click on each of these links to get full instructions. So with the sock puppet, for example, you have lots of instructions with photographs to show you exactly what to do. Same with the storage jar. And same with the lunchbox or storage box. And you can see how effective it is just to use very, very simple techniques. Everyone is completely unique. The Pop-Up Poetry Club meets on a Wednesday morning. We also run regular poetry projects and poetry cafes. We're inviting you to write or sign a poem on the theme of Together and send it to us to share on social media. We're also going to be publishing an anthology of the Together poems in November and everybody who contributes will get a copy of the physical book. So that is more about our Join In From Home programme. You should laugh over in the West Midlands. I'm actually having to use violinist rosin on my fingers to stop them sticking to the keyboard. That <laughs> is how hot it is. If anybody has better ideas, I've searched the internet in vain. Let me know. Did you have anything you wanted to say to follow up on that? No, I mean, I think that almost, you know, whilst this weather can can sap us of energy um it, it does give that kind of to be to be creative and you know sit down with a pencil and just draw something you see uh you know go through your recycling bin assuming it's not unhealthy and make a robot or something or an instrument or something just you know it's it's funny how these kind of thoughts can you just take you like to somewhere else and and you know and then also it can just if, if you are finding the heat uncomfortable then don't write a poem about heat but go and <laughs> do something that distracts you um or go and write a poem about being cold or something you know so we talked about the positives and negatives and opposites you know sometimes do that go and go and sit in the garden in the heat and imagine what it'd be like if you were sat in your ice box <laughs> <laughs> yes um 
And it would stick your, your feet in a bucket of water or something. Well, I was going to yeah. say, let's move over from the creative thinking and come back to our expert. We have to say he is not training to be a medical doctor, but an academic one. But our very own Josh Surgeon, it turns out when he's at university, is looking all at how the disabled body processes heat. So with those minor caveats, give us some advice on how to avoid heat stroke. We've had it before, but I kind of feel like we need it again today. It's hotter than it's ever been. And um, yeah, so the, the best things to do, um, like Julie mentioned, is um, kind of buckets or, or bowls of kind of a room temperature water, pop your hands in, pop your feet in, you know, whether that's a, a bowl of water that you pop on the table you know, if, if you've got a bath, pop your feet in there or a shower or kind of anything like that. Um, if you've got a paddling pool that you want to kind of fill up, you don't have to fully get in it because and you've got to get out of it again, which I know is probably a problem for a lot. I know that's certainly my issue. I'm fine getting in. It's the getting out that causes the real issues. Um, uh, <laughs> things like um, damp towels um, or damp cloths kind of around the back of the neck. Um, are really good uh, and then kind of drinking drinking plenty of water making sure you're keeping your your hydration up um, but drink kind of little and often and um, so rather than kind of waiting three hours and then being like oh I'm really really thirsty I'm going to go and kind of chug a pint or two pints of water and try and drink kind of consistently throughout the day and um, you know if you've got a water bottle great use that and just kind of sip from it regularly and um, you know if you don't then just use um, cups but yeah try and drink continuously rather than kind of break big drink break big drink and and i think that um whilst some people find sweating unpleasant sweating in heat is a is actually it, how it, you yeah, keep cool main mechanism and if you're not cool. sweating or you stop sweating and you feel yourself getting hotter then that's when you need to either be getting advice or at least start with making sure you are hydrated because obviously the more you sweat and the more fluid comes out of you then you do need to put it in but again as Josh just said kind of room temperature drinks are certainly if you're really thirsty because the, the a, an ice cold drink as pleasant as it can be um can actually send the wrong wrong signal to the body yeah if, if you are kind of if you are looking to cool yourself down um, things like ice chips or ice slurry. So you can probably buy that from the shop um, or just get some ice cubes and hit them. Um, <laughs> kind of you go out. Out. Um, oh. Sorry, go on, Drew. Yeah, if you do go out to buy ice or anything else, then apart from social distancing and washing your hands, presumably wearing a hat is pretty critical in this heat. Uh, yeah, it, it will just kind of protect you. You know, the, the more shade you can have, you know, the the less direct sunlight you you have on you, um, you know, the the better. You know, if, if you think about um, lots of kind of very hot countries, um, maybe not Australia because they all appear to surf all of the time. Um, <laughs> but if you think of some of the, you know, kind of India and, and places like that, you know, the, the outfits are long and flowy. Um, yeah, it, lots of our neighbours are much skin. better dressed, much better dressed for the weather than we are. And indeed, in terms of women who dress, well, Muslim women who choose to dress quite traditionally, much better off in terms of protecting COVID, not least because all of their outer layers come off as soon as they get through their doors. But back to me in my hot tuna t-shirt. The other <laughs> thing that we've tried to do, because obviously you've got to keep doing the washing, is wash stuff in just completely cold water and then hang it out to dry in front of the fans so that as the air's coming through the fans, it's actually getting cooled. I'm not quite under sure why it does that, but that is how it works, isn't it? Uh, yes, but you have to make sure is that it's blowing cold air. Um, if you blow hot air onto something wet, all it is going <laughs> to do is ramp up the humidity and make the heat feel much, much worse. Um, I know that because before they invented lovely fancy heat chambers uh, in which you can kind of set it 
um, people that did my line of research uh, would just get a tent and a bowl of hot water and a fan. Uh, and that is how you kind of simulated really hot and humid uh, conditions. So yeah, if, you, if that does work, but just make sure it's kind of cool water. Um, yeah, otherwise you're going to make, you make yourself feel far worse. <laughs> Yeah, and I actually think it's a fair point in this heat because, well, I'm sure we're not the only people who literally can't think straight, you know, and you find yourself making stupid mistakes. And if your fan heater is also your cooler, then you absolutely can put the wrong button on by mistake. Okay. Fortunately, we just have fans and they seem to be yeah. dying by the day. One died they yesterday, do. one yes. died today. Thank goodness for Amazon. I, I was just going to say... Don't go out in the midday sun. No. Um, <laughs> so if you're going to go to buy some ice cubes, uh, try to avoid uh, sort of like really from, a, from about lunchtime up until about three o'clock. Well, actually, if you look at the weather forecast as I've been doing, it's been getting, certainly in the cities, hotter and hotter till seven o'clock at night. Oh. So that, you know, the sort of the European traditional kind of siesta would go on till about mm. five. But I just think do everything first thing. That's what I'm doing at the if moment. You, can, yeah, you know, sure. if you've got to go out, do it first thing. That's so when yeah, it's I mean, I, I've got lots of friends that live kind of in in europe as as sports people in kind of spain and italy and places like that um and yeah the the whole kind of idea of, of this yesterday is it's like it's just too hot like you know they, they get up really early get everything done before kind of 12 and then go home and you know quite literally chill out until it starts cooling down again and then you know that's why everything's kind of super late and it's kind of you know things are open till 10 or 11 it's because yeah from kind of 12 till four or five they're just like we're not going out have you seen the sun it's so hot well um, absolutely but i think this is a good moment before we move on just to spend a couple of minutes with steriplergia from act up's assistance dog merlo Every Wednesday, we have a virtual nature watch, usually where Julie's assistant's dog, Precious, goes out into the back garden and shows Julie what the outside world looks like because our garden is, or my garden, I should say, since Julie had to move in for the duration, is too small to socially distance. Um, but today, we have a report back from Merlo, and Merlo and Stera and Hannah Facey from ACT UP have managed to relocate their shielding to a barn on the edge of Suffolk for some weeks. And it was pretty much a military operation to make sure that everybody stayed safe. That poor dog hadn't been out of the flat. So I think he would have really loved this, but I'm going to like enjoying it as well. So this is Merlot in the wood.
And that, I think, is what's known as slow television, which is becoming increasingly popular, and I can really see the appeal. We have more of that from Merlot next week, I'm delighted to say. And I love the bird song. Now, Julie, you helped sort out Merlot's camera and obviously Precious's. Do you want to just tell us again? Because it was much cheaper than you would have thought, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. The harness itself is uh depending on the size of the dog up to about 20 pounds this is via amazon although obviously other suppliers or or distributors are are available um but merla obviously had to have a bigger harness than precious does because she's a much smaller dog um but even so it's the same style which i was quite impressed at because i thought they might have to change the style to accommodate his size the, um, the camera itself is a little what they call a sports camera or an activity camera. And again, that was below £30, but we added an external microphone to it because when it's actually in its case, it's harder to pick up external sounds. So with the external microphone, without the card, the memory card, it came to about £32. It was a very, very good deal. Um, and the cards themselves vary in price according to the size, the capacity of the memory. Yeah, and of course it is possible, as I quite often do, just to swap cards from one to another. So if anybody else is doing any kind of, we talked about nature photography on Monday, nature photography, or you're getting your pet to do some photography or filming, we'd love to see it. It's time for the weekly clockwork Paralympics. So introducing the competitors, Robin and Josh, who is playing for Birmingham 2022 today? Uh, we have this, this uh, young male Ted athlete. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's not giving us his stage name. Sorry? bit of audio description of your teddy bear. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. So it's a very small teddy. I thought it was almost Piglet, um, but it isn't quite. It's like, I think it's Piglet's brother. Uh, it's, a, it's a light brown teddy, um, and it's wearing a blue and white uh, one-piece kind of baby grow typey thing. I'm not really sure. I'm not getting an awful description here. Um, with a red heart on the front. Uh, and to show that he is very sporting with his heart on his body. And these bears will be taking part, as usual, in the international virtual bear hunt for any young people who are taking part in that. Here we also have quite a small but rather more rotund light brown teddy bear. He's got a red and white spotted bow tie. He's got a blue little Guernsey jersey that says Skipper, and he has... A white and black sailing cap. His name's Tony. He decided he would see if he could do better this time round. He has competed for London 2012 before. So I did try Clockwork Dogs, new competitors, but they literally went round in circles and it was difficult <laughs> to tell who'd won. So I believe from what I can remember, we have our Clockwork Caterpillars competing on the sprint today. Do you want the one in my right hand or my left hand? We got, I think today, today or tomorrow is, I think, International Left Handers Day. Yeah. So we will go for your left hand, which is the one that is by the wall, right? No. So it's the one that will appear right on the screen as yeah. we're watching it. Which I believe is the banister side of the screen. <laughs> okay, so now you've chosen your side of the race course. I'm going to put the film on and get you to do commentary stroke audio description. Thanks. So this is me winding them. Yeah, so this is the, this is just is dew, in, in the pit, dew in the pits. <laughs> and they are off. Are you ready? Oh, he's looking neck and neck between our two competitors. And they appear to be veering slightly over towards the uh, right-hand side or the left-hand side as you look at it. And orange appears to have stopped. And the green caterpillar appears to be 
um, uh, trying to do a U-turn. <laughs> um, it's this way. I think this way. Don't go back down the course. Uh, describe it in, in the best manner. Oh, right. yeah, I think the way I would describe it is the green caterpillar sabotaged the orange caterpillar by running into it and then crawling around it so it could do nothing but to oh, give dear. up. But on those grounds, it was the one in your left hand. So <laughs> we congratulate ourselves on uh, winning today's wicked trophy. By the way. That way, I'm. I, I, this seat is. I my left and right is rubbish at the best of times because I'm left-handed, which yeah. I'll celebrate tomorrow. But uh, yeah, it's even worse in the heat. Yeah. And the cameras are mirrored. I, I was I was struggling before the show trying to brush my hair, it using the live stream, but it was going the opposite way to what I thought. It, it was a very difficult process. <laughs> And then there, there, to do it. Yeah, there are so many new skills that everybody out there has had to learn since March. Um, I'm meeting a lot of artists who are saying they really don't feel comfortable doing Zoom. They don't feel comfortable doing live streams. They don't feel comfortable appearing online. Um, neither do we. But we're managing. And I think it's going to be really important that all of us develop confidence in this atmosphere. If you're an artist, we'd love to hear about your projects, but particularly perhaps if you'd like a bit of practice. You know, if you know that in order to continue working as an artist, you're going to have to move your work online, but you're not comfortable, we can do lots of things offline. We can record programs and indeed not use them. We can really help. So please you know, I'm somebody with almost no short-term memory, aphasia, and somehow a bit, I've gone from somebody who would never dream of doing a live stream to coping with doing this three times a week, including the engineering and the production. You know, we're all managing to do things that are way, way out of our comfort zone, and we're living outside of our comfort zone. So like you say, if you would like to come on the show, but you'd like some practice first, or there's other things you've got to do that are even more intimidating, get in touch. <laughs> We've got what's known as a crawler across the bottom of the, of the screen. And our email address is simply info at together2012.org.uk. You can also write to TV at together2012.org.uk or indeed directly to me, Ju, that's just J-U. So now I think is that point in the week when we look at what's available in terms of the world of virtual sport and particularly computer games. Although they're not really computer games anymore, are they? Because they're mostly played on consoles and phones. Um, you can still play it on, uh, on, on computers. I think it is... Uh... If you're uh, uh, if you're, yeah, I, I, there's a there's a certain argument that PC gaming is better, uh, but then you have to be able to kind of build PCs and do all sorts of technical things uh, that I just don't want to. So it's easy, easier to get a console. I mean, I, it just comes pre-made. Hate to be one um, to throw a spanner in an argument, yeah. but what is a console if it's not a computer? <laughs> uh, it is a self-contained system, so it is separate to a kind of a, a computer yeah, yeah. or a PC. Okay. Anyway, uh, tangents uh, are rife. So, yeah, uh, gaming to start with. Um, one of the reasons we have this gaming section is, you know, it, it was a good thing to do kind of in, in lockdown to distract yourself from what was going on uh, kind of in the outside world um online games and just to say at the moment that um we mustn't be fooled by the government in fact we know there's a whole number of you out there in a lockdown at the moment and we're not forgetting about you or indeed anybody else and i believe it's possible that lockdown is going to be extended further across the greater manchester area soon so yes i think many many people not just like us, we've officially stopped shielding, but in reality, the infection rate is quite a lot higher than it was a month ago. So what's different? But yeah, I think there's also a lot of people who are actually still locked down, whether they're in the shielding group or not. So 
And my guess is that is going to continue till next spring. So we know there's a group of you who are probably even more desperate for things to do than you were in April. So I'll hand back to Josh to tell us what they are. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to um, kind of highlight I saw on the news yesterday um, that game console sales. Uh, so July of last year, there was 1.9 million consoles. And then July this year, there was 3 million consoles uh sold and it just kind of shows that yeah people are, are embracing the uh the, the idea of, of, of gaming people that maybe kind of won't have done it before or kind of weren't sure about getting kind of getting into it they weren't sure about gaming i know it's something that you two have kind of dipped your toes in slightly uh in, in lockdown um but yeah kind of that, as she was saying you know lockdown is still going on uh, it's not too late to uh, to join in. You're never too old to start gaming. Um, so yeah, that I'd, it was just kind of an, an interesting thing that I'd seen. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about kind of games that you can you can play. Um, we've been playing a lot of uh, with kind of the the Formula One being back on. We've had a lot of racing games recently, haven't we? Um, which we've kind of really enjoyed. Which I'm going to say you don't need any skill for. Um, he might disagree because he likes to drive into walls quite a lot. Um, but it, it, they are kind of very forgiving. You know, if, if you get it wrong, you're uh, you're not going to get shouted at by some kind of angry teenager on the internet. You can just kind of rewind it and try again and again until you can finally make it around that first corner at Silverstone. Um, so can we put some links to some of those up on the highlights and links page later? Yes. I, Brilliant. Uh, I will send you some list of games over. Um and I was going to say, I mean, some of the console games, I know we talked a while ago about the cooperative game that we played about that was escaping from prison. Um, but for those who who do have um, the consoles where you can play with people in other houses, you know, you, it, there, it's another way of being ever so slightly less isolated and that you can join in um, um, warfare games and Dungeons and Dragons on the computers and many other things where you are still in the you're, you're you're communicating with the outside world where even if it's through the game or the chat in the game yeah um, and they can be uh competitive games they can be cooperative games there's some games where you're cooperating with your team and competing against another team and um, you know there's kind of what whatever you want you can within reason you, you can find um, and I believe, I mean, and for all the creatives who and artists who work in gaming, there's also whole online communities, aren't there, for people who are interested in how to design the characters, the artwork, the, you know, the software and so on. So, yes, it is, a, you know, people think of it as a very solitary thing, but actually it's quite a sociable occupation. What else would you recommend this week, Josh? Um, so we're a little bit on uh, sport. Some of it is kind of uh, sporting news. Um, Today was the, uh, or would have been the closing ceremony, or it was the closing ceremony of the London Olympics um, eight years ago, uh, which was given that it, well, it was from the Paralympics, but it kind of together came out of 2012. I thought it was a nice thing to uh, to just kind of comment on. Um, and I know, Julie, you, you mentioned um, that last week, uh, kind of over the span of, of last week, um, Jesse Owens won his four Olympic golds, um, set three world records and I think seven Olympic records over the course of kind of heats and things um, at the Berlin Olympics in 1936, um, which, you know, was a, 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 a huge thing, you know, as, as a, a, a black athlete or an African-American athlete kind of at, you know, with everything that's going on around those games and you know, for, for him to kind of do that and the, the political statements that came out of that. Um, I think it was really, it was the 84th anniversary last week um, of that. So, and it was something I completely missed on, on last week's show, um, which I feel a little bit bad about. I feel like I should have remembered that. Um, so thank you for reminding me uh, on that one, uh, Julie. And then the final thing, um, it actually comes out next week. It comes out on the 19th, uh, which is a week today. So I'll talk about it then. Um, but Netflix are putting out a docu series called High Score, um, which I think is six episodes, 
um, which kind of goes through the history of gaming and classic games uh, and kind of how it developed from kind of 2D Pong and, and Atari to kind of Mario and, and, and Sonic into kind of how it is uh, now, which sounds and looks really, really interesting. Yeah, I was just thinking there wasn't much of a role for artists and dramatists when we were just shooting down space invaders and how times have changed. But those tiny graphics and those very, very kind of brief scenarios still became incredibly real. And I think it's that whole power, isn't it, of what's on the screen or what's on the page. So we're not rapidly approaching we have another five minutes to go but we're coming up to the end of our show so i'd like to just flag up friday friday is our dressing up to go out to stay in day um particularly if you're in lockdown why not dress up and send us a picture or a video it doesn't have to be to do something real you might want to go to the moon or the bottom of the sea. You might want to go to a place that it's impossible to get to at the moment, but you've already got your outfit. Um, so please dress up, stay in, but send us the pictures. Can I put a towel over my head? <laughs> <laughs> Soaking wet towel over my head. And I'll come in with, with just me underneath yes, it. And I'll just shave mine. Yes, so if you've got interesting ways to dress up in this heat, please don't wait. Don't worry about waiting till Friday. Just send us the photos now. Another one of our regular slots on Friday is our something for the weekend. And then we look at all sorts of things that are available online and offline to do from home at the weekend. And like I say, we very much hope to have the artist Penny Pepper with us. But I think that might depend a little bit on the weather. Do you two, three, want to say your goodbyes and I will do my best to find the poem that I mentioned earlier? I'll, okay, I'll, 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 I'll go. Shall, and... I, shall I go first and then you oh, guys? Um... I, I just wanted to thank everybody who sat with us through the heat. And, I'm, you know, I, I think what we were saying earlier on about finding things to do that don't take up an awful lot of physical energy is really good. And thank you so much for taking part with us especially you guys. <laughs> yes, and uh, Julia, that uh, wonderful yeah. talent. I just, there was something I wanted to add, um, just on, on the sports side, I just think it's interesting to in, in terms of where we come from, is that British Swimming have launched something called Pride in Water, uh, which is the their LGBT plus um, inclusive programme. Um, I'm sure we can find out more about that uh, in the future but i just think it's interesting that a sporting body it's you know another sporting body has um publicly well, supporting absolutely and i think for disabled swimmers from the lgbtqi plus communities that's going to make a big difference uh, so let's come back to that next week did you have anything else you'd like to add as part of a goodbye josh and um, no just kind of echoing what what julia said about um you know, for, for joining us in in for what some people might kind of struggle uh, with the heat. So uh, thank you for spending your time putting up listening to us. And we'll see you all on Friday. Now, I'm going to come back to Judy just for a moment at the end of the poem because she's got something else relevant to this poem and today which we can add to the links. But I've realised to my amusement, and I hope to other people's, that this is actually called Poo-M. So it's poem with an extra O in brackets in the middle. And, um, and it, this is because it was written when I take the dogs out around the, the car park at the Village Hotel. So here it goes. Sorry, just Julie's just pointed out that the iPad has messed up again. Poo-M. Sunset over. Security lamps throw a flat pallor across the lot stretching out ahead. The cars are mostly still now, punctuated by the rush and roar of lights coming from nowhere. Another date, another place, another evening. The landscape new, but familiar. Joined defiantly by weeds and seeds, plants struggle against containment to grab the unwary. Dotted around the pitted concrete, condoms, butts and sparkling crystals speak of the hours to come. Ignorant of danger, 
the dog noses an uneven path, sniffing in a thousand stories. Tiny eyes gleam back through the undergrowth when the occasional rustling betrays their presence. Duty done, following close behind, I'm rolling along the gutter, looking up at the stars. <laughs> so I will say goodbye. Julie, if we want to look up at the stars tonight, where would we see them? In the sky, all, all over. <laughs> the, the, well, sometimes it's directional, but tonight it's all over, and it's the Perseid, meet, Perseid meteor showers, and there's going to be over 100 per minute. So that's over 100 stars per minute up in the sky. Between what times is best? Uh, 12 and 5.30 before dawn. So if you're too hot to sleep, wander outside or open a window, look up in the sky. Hopefully you might see a shooting star or even more than one. Make a wish and our wish will be that we see you again on Friday, 3 o'clock. Stay home, stay creative stay hydrated and stay well. Thank you for listening.